3, please. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I'll preach on thinking right. And uh, we'll deal with uh, renewing our minds. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to help us. Father, thank you so much for this day. And thank you for all your blessings. We thank you, Father, for the good attendance tonight. And we pray you bless uh, the service speak to our hearts we pray that you'd have your will and help us father become more dedicated to the word of god i pray father we would think about it memorize it muse over it etc and we pray father your will be done i pray our church would grow and mature spiritually and uh, you you bless that and help us be spiritually minded people and we pray Father, these things in jesus Precious name, amen. Amen. Notice, if you would, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. The Bible says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast heard and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation uh, through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And then please turn back to chapter 2 of Second Timothy, and we're going to take a peek at verse 15. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Thank you, you may be seated. So we see the word of God is so important in our lives and is profitable, as the Bible says in chapter 3, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So let's uh, define a few words here. We want to consider the word inspired in the second timothy chapter 1 verse 21 we'll turn there please second timothy chapter 1 and verse 21 and the bible says in verse 21 um for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of god spake as they are moved by the holy ghost now this verse alone is so powerful when you think about what it says the prophecy, the teaching, came not by the uh, will of man, but holy men, holy men of God spake as they're moved by the Holy Ghost. So this is not just any book. This is a spirit-inspired book. It's a book that God gave us uh, in his word, and uh, it's so important that we understand the the word of God and understand that it was written by holy men. You know, Jeremiah, Isaiah, David, uh, Peter, uh, Paul, these were holy men. And they were, what, moved by the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of writers over years. These were men that were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So the word infallible means perfect. Uh, everything will be come to pass. Inerrant means without error, incapable of error. So the second word we see is not only and we we, we uh, see is not only inspired but invaluable. It's profitable, and this means beneficial, useful, and full of profit for salvation. In James 1:18, the Bible says, "Of His own will begot He us with the word of truth." In Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is uh, sure, making wise and simple. Now turn with me, if you would, to Second Peter chapter 1, and we'll see verse 3 and 4. And the Bible says in Second Peter 1, According as his divine power hath given un unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So everything you need for this life and for uh, attaining godliness in your life uh, comes through the knowledge of him that had called us uh, to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us 
exceeding, exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So this is great, and these two verses are just packed. And again, he says in verse 4, whereby are given unto it exceeding great and precious promises. Now, let's just think for a moment, what are some promises that has blessed your heart personally? And when have a ver Craig? Yeah, that's great. Amen. Someone else? Bernie? Amen. Very good. James? Amen. Anyone else? Oh, sorry, Marcus. Amen. That's wonderful. And these are just four promises. And there's a book uh, filled with promises. So he says... We have given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of what? Of the divine nature. And that's the goal. We want to, once we're saved, God wants us to uh, conform to his image. And third of all, we see not only inspired, invaluable, but indoctrination. And it's for the purpose of teaching us what to believe. In Romans 12, verse 2, and be not conformed to this world. Why? We repented. We don't, we don't follow this world any longer. And, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ephesians 5, 17, wherefore, be not unwise, uh, but understanding the will of the Lord is. So the first thing we see in renewing our mind, that God's word enlightens our thinking. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, let's go back to our text here, and we, we see where the Bible teaches uh, in verse 16, uh, all scriptures given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the word of God enlightens us uh, concerning the person of God. So who's God? And uh, to the Muslim... Uh, his, his name is Allah, and he's a God who hates Jews and Christians. It's far from that verse that we believe and know to be true, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. To the Hindu, there are over 20,000 gods and goddesses. To the Catholics, there are, there's a God who wants us to earn heaven through our system of sacraments. To the Bible believer... Uh, our, our God is the only living and true triune God who loves sinful man so much that he gave his son uh, in our place to make payment for the sin of the whole world. So God is holy. He's eternal. He's immutable. He's sovereign. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's present here. He's present everywhere you go. Uh, he's wrathful. He's the truth. He's love. He's grace. He's merciful. He's faithful. He's a good God. Amen. He's long-suffering. He's benevolent. You cannot know God apart from his written revelation. And we know that there is a, a God by creation and by the heavens. And to know God personally, we must know God's word. So let it be in transforming our minds. The word of God enlightens us to the promises of God. Let's go to Romans chapter 4, please. Romans chapter 4. And notice, if you would, verse 21. And uh, the Bible says in verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he promised he was able also to perform. So God opens up our understanding, uh, enlightens us with the promises of God. Now, there are many promises found in the Word of God, and every one of them rests on the holiness of God. And that, and that God is perfect, and truth, cannot, and truth and, and cannot lie. 
God does not, uh, God does everything to glorify his name as his children. Everything we do should be to God's glory. Amen. So when it comes to uh, God's word, uh, it's exalted above his name. And there, where would it be without God's promises? In Acts, uh, Hebrews chapter 13, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, uh, verse 12, Paul knew this because he knew the Lord and knew his word. Uh, let's go to Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, please. And the Bible says, verse 12, um, for that, for the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know. And see, that's that Amen. great word, know. Amen. I know whom I have believed, Amen. and am persuaded he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Amen. So uh, then let's look at some of these verses. Uh, let's go to Titus chapter 1 and verse 2, please. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. In a hope of eternal life, which God, which cannot lie, promised before the world began. Let's go to First Peter, uh, chapter four, please. First Peter, chapter four, and notice, if you would, uh, verse nineteen. And the Bible says, uh, "Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well doing." as unto a, a faithful creator. And then let's go back to John chapter 8, please. John chapter 8, a great chapter. And uh, we'll notice a couple of verses here. Uh, verse 32, please. And the Bible says in verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's great, because remember the Bible says that we're without strength, we're we're, uh, we're paralyzed spiritually. We're in bondage. And the Bible tells us that he, he, sets, us, he sets us free, and we're free indeed. And then notice verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you're free indeed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we see in, uh, let us see in transforming our minds. The Word of God enlightens us about the power of God. And the scripture opens in Genesis with the power of God to create all things through his word. That's the greatness of God. God just spoke and things appeared. Amen. He created a solar system. It appeared. He didn't have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's to get a you know, bucket full of sand or you know, anything like that. It was just spoke the word. And think of God's power to create and sustain the universe. Now, you know, not only did God create the universe, and the universe is vast. I mean, if you had the most powerful uh, telescope, you wouldn't see the end of the universe. Amen. It goes on and on and on. How far, I don't know, but it's not, it, it seems unlimited. Uh, and then, not only does God care for the solar system, also for the sparrow, the flowers of the field, and the grass. And God said for us to cast all care upon him. Amen. <laughs> that is greatness. Yeah. There's no one greater than God. Amen. And we should praise him for that. Amen. We should love him for that. Amen. We should appreciate him. And then we see in Ephesians chapter 3, let's turn there please, in verse 20, Ephesians chapter 3, and verse 20, and the Bible says in verse 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So I have to tell you that, you know, you're thinking... I, you know, I need to get this, this thing from uh, my business. Nothing's impossible, God. God can do it. it his, his ability is exceeding. It's above all that we ask or think. So, 
you know, I, I so appreciate that. And that I can rely on God taking care of things that seem impossible. But if we believe God, he is able. Amen. Now think back in your lives. Maybe there was a need, a place to live, a place to, you know, take a, a need for, you had in your lives, maybe for clothes, maybe for food, and how God met your needs. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. I can tell you that God has helped me in my 47 years, 48 years of living for him and serve him, I could look back and every situation, God has met our needs. God has worked things Amen. out. And I've gotten to a place in my life, I, I mean this with all sincerity, I've gotten to a place in my life where I don't get concerned about things. I don't worry about things that are out of my control. And I mean that with all my heart. You say, well, you, well you're going to rely on the church? No. I rely on God. Amen. I, I, I look to God every day. I, I cast my care upon him every day. And so I, I look to God to meet my needs. I don't look to man. And uh, men may have a part in it, but I look to the Lord. And I say that all sincerity. And that's a wonderful way to live. You know, you think, oh, I got this bill due and all these burdens. And so cast it all upon God. What did he say? He said, Cast all you care upon me, I care for you. Well, if that's the case, Lord, here it comes. <laughs> Why would I carry my burden when God will do it? Amen. And so I, I live, you know, with the fear of God. I live with cast my care upon the Lord. And there's no problem with people, with situations, with with uh you know, well, what's going to happen in the presidential race? God knows. Amen. God knows. That's right. See, what if Trump loses? What if Harris wins? What if Harris loses? What if Trump wins? Doesn't matter. I'm in a different kingdom. Amen. That land in Guatemala really looks, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So we see letter D in transforming our minds. The word of God enlightens us about the plan of God. So God gives us wisdom. In other, in other words, he wants to save men. In John 3, verse 15 and 17, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. So God also uh, will secure uh, the saved. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, please. 1 Peter chapter 1. And notice, if you would, verse 3. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again, nor born again, unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So if Jesus would have just died and uh, was buried, but he didn't resurrect, we would be in all, the uh, Bible tells us in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, we'd be of all men most miserable. But God goes on and tells us in his word, in verse 4, uh, to the inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and that faith is not a way reserved in heaven for you. Isn't that great? Amen. So you can't lose it. Why? It's in heaven. Amen. And then he goes on and tells us, in verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. And then notice, if you would, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. We pick up here verse 10. And the Bible tells us, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. That's the Holy Spirit. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. 
I want to tell you this. Whatever you do, don't accuse God of lying. Amen. He's a God of truth. Right. Now, the devil's a liar, but don't accuse God of lying. Because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So we see that God secures the saved. He sanctifies the saved in First Thessalonians 4, 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. That means God sets us apart from the world, sets us apart for, uh, for the ability to bless us. He sets us apart. He helps us to grow and mature and develop in sanctification. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And then 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 because it's written, be holy, for I am holy. And then also to supply the need of the saved, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be... Um, <laughs> all right, God, yell at me. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> anyway, that was good. I'm glad you said that. Amen. God's word enables us, number two, uh, our spirituality. So, 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's go back to our text, please. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So, it's transforming our minds. And the word of God reproves wrong thinking. That's important. We want to think right, and we are um, we are uh, 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 born into this world with the ability to think wrong. <laughs> that, that's the truth. That's right. But God has given us His Word to help us think right, Amen. and that's why He has reproves uh, reproves us in His Word. How many were raised knowing God's attributes? I wasn't. Good. Good for you. I mean, I knew God was holy, but that, that was about it. And how many were raised uh, with wrong thinking about God and his word? I was. Right? Not trusting him. Not living by faith. Not walking in the spirit. But rather walking in the flesh. Again, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. As a man thinketh. In his heart, so is he. And then in transforming our minds, God's word works, uh, God's word writes wrong thinking uh, and gives us truth. He corrects us. And that's a wonderful thing. You know, I remember when I first started, I got saved, I started reading my Bible. I couldn't believe how crooked my, my mind and heart was. You know, it was just, it was just depravity. And uh, I praise the Lord. I mean, I've, I've gotten better. I'm not where I need to be, but I've definitely gotten better. Amen. So notice First Peter uh, chapter 1 again, and we pick up in verse 13. Wherefore, gird up your loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Paul and Peter says, gird up your loins of your mind. And then he goes on and says, verse 14, as obedient children, not fashion yourselves according to the former lust in, in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be holy for as I am holy. So I have to tell you, one of the first things I thank the Lord for, I, I usually thank God for his attributes. And one of the first things I do is I thank God for his holiness. 
And I have to tell you, I mean, I want to be holy. But I'm not. No, I want to be. I fall so, so short. And uh, I know it's very appeasing to me. It's pleasing to me. But I'm not. And uh, I know that's quite a command that God gives us. And uh, so I strive for it. I want to be that way. And when I fall short, I, I confess to God. Why? It's, I'm unholy. You know, I, I, I've told the Lord many times, I look forward to one day getting out of this body and being made perfectly holy. I'll never have a wrong thought, a wrong desire, a wrong motive. Praise the Lord. And I know that day's coming. And it's going to be here sooner than we believe. So that's very important that we uh, are, are committed to that. And we, we're going to correct our lives according to his holiness. I think it's back to our programming, our destiny, our family, our teaching, our experience, our associations, our philosophies, the media, the devil. That's where we come up with our thinking. But the Bible tells us uh, in, in John chapter 8, verse 44, you have your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning and, and abides not in truth. So my job is now that I'm saved, I've got to be focused on transforming my mind. And God's word instructs us in righteous thinking. So it's a cha and we, it challenges our thoughts. When you're reading the word of God, there's a certain verse going to stick out or jump out at you and challenge you concerning your thinking, your motivation. It's going to check your thoughts. It's going to choose your thoughts. It's going to change your thoughts. You know, the way I was 48 years ago is not the way I am today. I know that. I praise the Lord for that. But it's not what I want to be. And that leads me to a third point. God's word equips, equips us to ministry. And uh, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17, all good works. And that's what God wants out of us. He wants us to live our lives pleasing to his sight. So uh, I'm going to skip over some of this. Um, the first birth brings us physically into this world. The second birth, being born again, brings us into the spiritual realm. And that's life-changing. You can come up with anything you want to believe, but I'm telling you, it's life-changing. And you're never the same after you get born again. So those who have never been regenerated are dead in trespasses and sins. The soul of man uh, is the real person. And the Bible is called the mind. Uh, it's called the mind and is where we make our decision. Our soul, our heart, our mind, it's all the same. And the soul is not only the seed of intellect, but also the will and the emotions. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, the bowels of mercy. So what, what does God mean, the bowels of mercy? Well, that's where our mind is. That's where the thought process takes place. The brain holds information, but the thought process is uh, in our, in our, where our soul is. And uh, we think and des decide in our soul. It's also where we, our emotions and feelings come from. So consider what our Lord preached throughout his ministry, challenging men to think right. Now stay with me on this. We're going to have a lot of verses. We're going to start in Matthew. Let's turn there, please. Matthew chapter 5. And uh, the Lord rebuked uh, wrong thinking about the Lord. And uh, notice verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, 
I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So they were thinking he's getting rid of the law, but it was so far from the truth. Amen. We need the law to bring us to Christ. Right. It's one of the greatest tools. The law of Moses, the Ten Commandments. You go through those Ten Commandments, and then you're not going to come out and say, hey, I'm a pretty good person. No, you're a sinner. Right. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, please. And the Bible says in verse 7, but when you pray, you not vain repetitions as the heathen do. Who, who uses vain repetitions? Heathen, the Bible says. We're just going to take the word of God for what it says. Amen. Don't add to it. You add to it, you're going to add a lot of problems in your life. And for they that are uh, they shall be heard for much speaking. So the heathen, and who the heathen? False religion. Sure. So that's what you have to understand. And uh, Jesus was correcting people about the wrong thinking about prayer. Matthew chapter 9. Notice, if you would, verse 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? <laughs> so they had evil thinking going on in their hearts, and Jesus rebuked them. And then notice if you would chapter 10 and verse 34, please. Chapter 10 and verse 34. And the Bible says, Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So people always say around Christmas, oh, Jesus is here to give us peace on earth and so on. No, he's not. He's, he brought a sword with him. Amen. And the sword is used for division. That's very important. The millennium is going to bring peace. Right? That's when peace is going to come. But not until then. So Jesus rebuked. Let's go to John chapter 5, please. John chapter 5. And notice verse 39. The Bible tells us they had wrong thinking about salvation. And the Bible says in verse 39, um, uh, let's see here. I search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify in me. So Jesus put himself right dab in the middle of, he said, I'm telling you, you got to search the scripture. Why? Because they speak of me. Not your religion, but of me. And then we see in chapter 3 and verse 17, let's turn back, in verse 17, the Bible it says they had wrong thinking. In uh, verse uh, 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. So I said, well, preacher, I thought Jesus condemned the world. No, man was condemned before that. Before Jesus was sent in the world, man was condemned. And that's important to think right. So, and then we see chapter 16, and uh, notice, if you would, verse 2 and 3. Chapter 16 and verse 2 and 3. And the Bible says, they shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that they uh, whosoever killeth you uh, will think that they do God's servant, service. So you see, people are going to persecute people in the future, and they think they're doing God's will. And, um, and they, these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. So we can look at different periods of time where uh, we, people thought by killing Christians they were doing God's will. And then last of all, let's go to Romans chapter 12 and notice verse 3. And the Bible tells us, For I say through the grace of God unto me, for I say through the grace of given unto me, 
to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think himself soberly according to God's had dealt uh, to every man the measure of faith. So again, there was people were thinking wrong about themselves. So the mind is where spiritual battles uh, take place. And we can call this a spiritual battlefield. Proverbs 23, 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And this is why it's imperative to think right, to base everything on the word of God. And uh, our Lord wants us to think right, and most people don't think the way God intended man to think. And uh, so Adam and Eve were perfect harmony when the Lord was uh, uh, before uh, they had sinned. They were perfect harmony. They got along. They had no wrong thoughts, no wrong desires. And they were at peace. They had harmony. And after sin entered, they became fearful and deceitful, dishonest, selfish, proud, and blaming each other for their sin. You know, the woman thou gavest me. Oh, the man thou gavest me. And man has only gotten worse since that time. So the Bible clearly teaches us that he, God gave his word that men might submit to it, yield to it, surrender to it, follow it, obey it, and so on. And the word of God is what causes the transformation of our heart and mind, our soul. And so what does that teach us? We've got to get in the book. Amen. We've got to soak our soul with the word of God. It's very important. You know, you can't go around life like this hoping that it works. It won't work. You, you've got you've to read the Word. And uh, some people say, well, preacher, I don't have time to read it. That's fine. Listen to it. You know, praise the Lord for modern conveniences. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord for God that... He's allowed these things to take place in our lives. But if you want to be spiritually minded, you've got to get in the book. And if not, you're, you're robbing yourself. Robbing yourself of what God has for you. And I, I would say that's probably the most foolish thing you do. Whether you're lost, not listen to the Word of God, this book has all the answers. If you're saved, you're stunting your growth. God has more for you. But you've got to get in the book. And that's thinking right. All right? Let's stand on our feet and uh, pray and ask the Lord to help us. Father, we thank you so much for this study tonight. We pray that you'd have your will in our lives. We pray you'd do a great work tonight about people and they would consider reading the Word of God. And uh, I, I pray, Lord, that you'd. Bless that in a great way, whether they're lost or they're saved. Father, help them get in the book. And I pray they search the scriptures and uh, because they think they have eternal life, but they are those who speak of me. I pray, Father, that people would consider the Lord and consider the great verse we just read tonight and help us to hide the word of God in our heart. Why? That we might not sin against you. Help us to separate ourselves unto the Lord and base it on the Bible. Help us refer to the Word of God and, and let that be the answer book for us, not our own thoughts. I pray, Father, you bless in a great way tonight, and I pray that your will be done in our church. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, heads about it.